Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Money Pit aka Project LS400 episode number 12. So uh, let me clean up a bit first. I didn't even clean up the workshop after the last episode. Um, let's recap a bit. In the previous episode we did the first start of the engine and it ran, engine ran fine, only the power steering pump made a squealing noise and I suspected it could be a mechanical fault due to my lack of experience during the rebuild of that power steering pump. So I took the power steering pump off, I took the alternator off because while I tried to bleed the system um, I accidentally uh, put in too much power steering fluid and it spilled out of the reservoir and almost ran onto the alternator. So I quit fiddling and fooling around and I uh, took it off. And let me show you what I've done. Oh yeah, beside to the work uh, on the power steering pump, I took off the fan, fan bracket and the serpentine belt. So let's head on to the bench where my power steering pump currently rests so here it is so in the previous episode I uh, started the car for the first time and it ran fine apart from the noise the power steering pump made and I wasn't entirely sure if it was just cavitation noise because of the uh, system had to pump out all the air um, I tried to bleed the system by filling it and stirring the car left to right, but it's a two-man job and I overfilled the reservoir at one point and it spilled out the fluid and ran onto the alternator, but it ran on this plate here, this is this protection plate, so nothing got into the alternator, but I had to take it off to make it sure. So what I did, I took the power steering pump off to make sure that I didn't screw up during the rebuild. Um, so I, implying that there may have been a mechanical failure. So I took it apart, took the back plate off, looked inside, but no mechanical damage or signs of a wrong assembly were found. But uh, what I did do and with uh, what I didn't do in the... Uh, rebuild uh, episode of the power steering pump is take this element out which houses the pressure regulator um, because this nut was very 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 tight so I lent an, an air gun or an air uh, jack hammer how do you call it link it in here um, and I managed to get it out clean it up and it was very varnished, so I assume something may have been stuck in this pressure regulator, uh, causing the flow go into a loop or in a wrong system, so that um, prevents the system from being bled. So I took it apart, cleaned it out, measured everything according to the workshop manual. Uh, everything should be fine right now. If it isn't, I have to take it off for the well, second, third time it is, in meanwhile, and go looking for a rebuild or a new one. Only thing is, at this moment I can't find anyone, or they are extremely expensive or non-available. So I contacted a Rekkers that specialized in Lexus and Toyota parts, and uh, it's the only one that may have had one in store, but they didn't. So I uh, have to give this a try and maybe put a little more effort in bleeding the system. What the record however did have was this panel here. It's the panel that surrounds the ignition lock. And as you may remember mine has a big hole in it. So it only cost me 20 euros. And uh, I think we'll be installing this in this car. And there's a little bit more work to do inside the car. I'll show you in the next scene. Let me show you what I mean. In case you didn't see that episode. Here we have the panel. Where they smacked the big hole in here. And I believe on the key fob. They must have had some tag and a tag reader in here. And they just smacked the hole in there and drilled the hole for this LED. Also, what I said, I want to get my instrument panel up and running in the original security system. Um, the LS400 is equipped with a 
Oh, let me get a little bit of light on there. With this key there is this... Come on buddy, focus a bit. There's this knob, which is used to lock and unlock the car. It doesn't work and I want to give that a try. It might be some finagling to find all the electronics out, but that's what's hopefully coming up in this episode. So let's get started. So I started off by reinstalling the power steering pump over here. And I haven't been with the car, working on the car for a couple of weeks now. And as these things go, you always lose track of bolts. But you, when you don't work for a couple of weeks on a car, obviously uh, all bolts uh, seem to go somewhere else. Um, but I found three of them. And currently it's installed with three of the four bolts. And when I find the fourth one, I know where it goes. Uh, serpentine belt is back on. Uh, I started the car and it still is noisy, but as I said, I'll leave that for what it is right now. Uh, what I also did is put the car up on jack stands so the wheels are free from the floor. So when I have to uh, bleed uh, the, the power steering system, uh, it's even more easy to turn the wheels left, left to right from full lock to full lock. Having said that, uh, when I ran the car and I checked for leaks, the car was dripping a lot of coolant from under the engine where the engine and the gearbox connect. So I stopped the car and when I looked better, uh, it was obvious I had a huge, a really huge uh, injector leak on injector number 7. So I've been working on a car for a couple of hours right now and most of the time spent uh, on uh, removing this injector rail and it's weird I had a leak on the opposite side over there um, one of the seals around the injectors uh, uh, was, was screwed was a bit folded inside the fuel rails it started leaking and when I checked this side nothing was leaking and all of a sudden uh, the rearmost uh, injector was leaking like crazy and I don't know if you can see it right now but really it was like a fountain a shower of fuel so put it off and really demotivated me so i'm not sure um uh, how to carry on from now i took the injector rail out and it's currently here on my bench with the number seven cylinder uh of number seven injector out and let me try to get it in focus here it was a bit crooked crooked here around there um, so what I did, it, it, at least this, this seal, this o-ring is not broken, so I'm gonna check all the other ones, reinstall the fuel rail, reinstall the connecting lines, the balance lines that go on the top that connect the, to the right hand side injector rail, give it another twirl and if something is leaking from there, I'll call it quits for today and anywho, I'm gonna start off with uh, checking all the o-rings on this side, reinstall the fuel rail, and then give it a test. Well, I started the car again, and let's have a look on the injector rail. Well, I hope the camera is focusing that you can hear me. But that's the one that was leaking. It's not leaking out anymore. I checked all the connections on the fuel system. So, all the fuel leaks seem to have gone. The only thing and I'm pretty sure you can hear it. It is a noisy power steering pump. Uh, well, leave that for now. Well, folks, we made some unexpected progress today. Uh, power steering pump still sucks, but as you can see, I have the fan shroud in, and I only have to click in the lower half. And in order to put the fan shroud in, I had to take the battery out, and when I did that, I found the missing bolt for the power steering pump and despite the fact I have to take it out on a later moment I'm gonna put the bolt back in so I'll crawl underneath the car put it in and the last thing I want to do today is to take the instrument panel out and we'll pick up from there now on to the next project as you can see I close the hood of the car leave it be for now nothing much I can do there at this moment I have to go on the hunt for a new power steering pump, pump I'm afraid. So, steering wheel unlocked. 
Okay, this is the problem we have here. I discussed it in an earlier video. You can see the needles uh, flash for a bit and then everything goes black. The primary indicators, they are projected uh, onto the instrument panel. The lower ones are actually in the um, instrument panel. But these lamp warning uh, uh, engine malfunction light are projected on there and they give this three dimensional impression. As you can see they seem to float and it's a neat trick Lexus did back in the day because they are projected from the side when I pass with my finger on this lower, on this to top edge, um, they go black because they are projected. Uh, Toyota used the same system, this 3D holographic effect in the Prius where they project the, the digital instrument panel. Okay, um, enough jibber jabber about that. Uh, let's get this out. It's a matter of taking these screws out, uh, pull this knob out and then we should be able to unscrew the instrument panel itself and I need a small screwdriver to um, release a, a connector so I completely lower the steering wheel do I have enough clearance to get it out I already run into the problem that I can't get the screwdriver in this hmm. Let me try a shorter one. No. Good lord. Didn't plan to do that. out in a decent manner. I remember this from my previous LS. Well, one of them was a hassle to get out. And I also remember one other thing. When I the uh, airbag warning light is in there, when I disconnect it, it flashes a, a malfunction light for the airbag system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. There we are. That goes to there. Now there are. Let me get you. Over here. Whoops, there's a lot of light, a bit too much perhaps. Yeah, maybe this is better. There are four screws that hold the instrument panel in place. Gonna do them next. And then we should be able to remove the entire instrument panel. No, it's set to its maximum outward position. I need a little extra room so I can put the panel out. So I never lose this tiny screw because I've lost already. If I lost enough screws already inside of the of the engine. One aside, that one aside. Uh, let's see if we can pull this thing out. That's as far as it goes. Let me see, there are three, four connectors on the back, and it's currently held in place for one of them. 
So I'm thinking about removing the top half of the sticking column. I'm not sure if it, that's entirely necessary. I'm trying to get this one out. Now then I have to tilt it the other way. And there it is, not without troubles, but it's out. So, and now we're off to my home workshop, and I'll pick you up from there and tell you what, according to my opinion, could be wrong. So, that's out and now we're off to my home workshop and I'll explain more about the repair I'm trying to attend here. I hope it's not too windy and that you can hear me. So I was about to start to work on the instrument panel this afternoon but we had this great sunny weather and I had my bike parked outside so I thought maybe it's good to have a change of scenery and maybe you like a change of scenery so this is where I'm spending my afternoon today and when I get back I'll continue to work on the instrument panel but look at this how beautiful and how green everything is after that long cold winter and spending many hours inside with Alexis in my dark and fairly cold workshop. Anyhow, anywho guys, I'll carry on riding and hope to see you later. And there are the tulip fields. Well folks, I'm back home from my motorcycle ride and I'm back at Project LS400. And as you can see in this light, I put it up in the sunlight. Um, how the instrument panel actually works. Now that there's direct sunlight on there, you can see the dials of the tachometer. Here's the speedometer, it's currently not much in the light. Now it is. Um, but in a car, in this situation, it would be black unless there's a ray of, di ray of direct sunlight on it. Um, the problem these instrument panels have and it's a common problem for the first generation LS400 is that they uh, remain black as it is. As you may have seen in the previous scenes um, when I put the ignition switch I turn it to on um, the, the needles uh, they flash and then they go black and everything else remains black. Only when I switch on the light you, uh, the indicator over here is illuminated but there's an also another problem when the instrument panel stays black the illumination of the buttons on the uh, center console uh, also uh, stay black they are not illuminated at this moment um, it's a common problem for these cars and it's due to a bad capacitor on the printed circuit board on the ba back of the instrument instrument panel and that also causes the illumination of all the other buttons on the dashboard and center console to stay black to stay out uh, another problem with a second capacitor um, causes a failing uh, fuel indicator um, I don't think you can see it at this point anyway uh, I have to replace that uh, capacitor too, so let me get you guys up on a tripod and I'll disassemble it and you can follow along. simple I hope the lightning isn't 
uh, that's better. I hope it wasn't too dark before. It's very bright in here at the moment. It's a bit of black. So the actual faulty capacitors aren't on this board, I think. They're on the one down here. Is there a third board? No, there's a flexible board down there. Let's remove this carefully. Now I have to look it up with exact capacitors are broken. There are only two. I've done this before. So I and I bought some extra capacitors back in the day. So I must have the spare ones over here from five years ago. See if I can pull these out carefully. No, they won't. Now, with the backside removed and having access to the printed circuit board, I'm going to look up which ones are the ones I need to replace. I thought it were, was on this circuit board, but I'm not entirely sure. They are these tiny round capacitors. But honestly, I have to Google it, which ones it are. And when I know, I'll get back to you. So I mentioned before that this is a common problem with these first generation LS400s. In fact, the build series from 1998 to 1992 have a, have a slightly different uh, instrument panel. They had the analog odometer, this, this one has a digital one, so there's an upgrade in the circuit boards. But they all started having a problem of um, illumination uh, uh, falling out, meaning that the instrument panel remained black and the instrument, the, the lightning in the buttons uh, also did, stopped working and back then uh, the Lexus dealer uh, ordered to replace them the cars were out of warranty back then uh, it was around the year 2000 and later when the LS 400s were 10 years old <clears throat> and they replaced them for a thousand dollars each which was a well and still is a whole lot of money but on the Lexus LS forum um, there was this guy who offered his services saying I can repair them, send them to me and I'll repair them for like 400, 500 dollars. So he had a flourishing business repairing uh, all the Lexus LS instrument panels. But there were other smart guys and electronics engineers. They started to reverse engineer the circuit boards and they discovered the problem um, of the capacitors uh, changing value and that caused the instrument panels to stop working like the uh, leaking capacitors on the ECU which you can see in this episode so uh, another smart fellow a lot of other smart fellows on the uh, Lexus forum I believe it's the LexLS.com forum uh, pinpointed the exact problem being this uh, can like capacitor C212 for causing the, the instrument panel background lighting problem <clears throat> and this one C142 to cause the fuel gates stop working and mine has the same problem especially on cold mornings the, the fuel gates stays on zero and almost doesn't move and all the same problem with the instrument panel uh, staying uh, black uh, is also more common on, on cold mornings that's this one so i'm gonna replace those two i've done that too on my previous ls400 um, back then i made a mistake of not soldering this one in correctly so it, uh, the, the, the soldering joint broke i had to redo that again 
So I'm going to address this. And there's another problem. Most LS4 rounders of this generation have is there's sticking needles. And that's a common problem on warmer days. Let me turn it around. Um, it doesn't show from here. But there are rest stops on the needles, especially for the tachometer and the speedometer. And what happens is, and during warmer weather, the grease inside that lubricates the mechanism. Oh, let me not focus on myself, but on my work. With these lighting problems I have here. Um, uh, the grease inside there becomes sticky, and then the needles stay on zero, not indicating engine speed or driving speed so you have to smack on the dashboard and they come loose and they start working that's something i want to address too meaning that i have to disassemble that too but that, that's the second job i'm going to do first off i'm gonna repair those two So there's the first one out, maybe you can show this on the camera, the darn thing will focus. Then to 16 volts, it doesn't show the capacity on here, but that's the first one out. It's a sudden change in the scene. I was about to get a new capacitor to solder in when I realized I didn't have those in stock anymore, so I have to order new ones. So on to the next job. Uh, I clip this loose, this front panel, and get it off. And this is what the inside of the instrument panel looks. Let me flip it over, get a better view. So here are the dials. And the needles and now you can see it's just a plain black piece of plastic it's backlit via a fluorescent tube they're actually circular tubes and those needles are tiny fluorescent tubes themselves they're really really tiny and they're really 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 fragile so let me get you guys set up again stay put guys so here's the back side. Let me get my screwdriver out and focus you a bit more. So the gauges themselves and the needles are driven by stepper motors, at least the speedometer and the tachometer. Not sure about the uh, temperature and the fuel gauge, but I'm going to unscrew them and see if I can clip. I'll get the interior out. I like to think there's not much damage to be done when I'm careful. But I need to pull them up, then pull that back. That's one. Alrighty. Let's see if we can lift this up. And it seems we can. Don't drop it. Oops. Well, there it is. And here's the back side of the instrument panel. Here are the oops, here are these stepper motors inside. And that's how it's constructed. And here we have, oh, let me put this down very carefully. And here you have the fluorescent tubes for the instrument panel lighting. Fascinating, never seen this before. A very expensive construction. 
must have cost a small fortune to engineer this. So the first job at hand is to try to clean this up a bit. I have some isopropyl alcohol in this container and cotton buds. And let's just see if it actually does something. Yeah. Okay, there's a slight change of plans. Um, you've seen me fiddle around and remove this clip, breaking this plastic part in the process. Um, those tubes are held in place with one clip, and there are rubber grommets on the back that hold them in place. So I'm thinking of pushing it out to this side, but for that, I have to remove all the bulbs and then I can pull this flexible circuit board off. So here's the flexible circuit board off. Let's put this aside. Uh -huh. And here are the rubber grommets that hold those fluorescent bulbs in place. Let's carefully push them out and keep our fingers crossed. We don't hear any glass cracking noises. small circuit board has come off it's loose right now only this connected part is, seems to be stuck not sure why so you can pry it a little And there it is. So here's one of the tubes out. And you can see this pattern on the back to which it responds. If it would be broken here, this side, it will be illuminated up to there. And it's the same problem some of these needles have. There's a conductive trace on the back side of the needles, and when it's interrupted or cracked due to aging um, only a uh, part of the needle is illuminated and you can uh, repair partially illuminated needles using conductive paint so those are clean a little bit more around the perimeter keep them separated so they go back in place and this is well, the suit black stuff coming off it's like this stuff let me get the cotton bud you see and here it doesn't come off too easily but there's this residue so that's clean now here's a pro tip from an amateur like myself 
uh, when you're cleaning glass inside your car or on these things, you definitely don't want to do it again. I've cleaned glass with a microfiber towel and a regular glass cleaner often, but when the sun is low and at certain angles of sunrise, uh, sunlight, you can see tiny, tiny fibers, and that's that are the microfibers that have come loose. So when you, when I would have done that on the inside of this cover panel, this semi-transparent panel, I need to clean the inside because there's the same kind of haze. I'm not sure if it shows on camera right now, but here's a bright part I cleaned as this haze also. When I clean this with a microfiber towel, it may look clean at first, but on a later moment, due to static electricity, those fibers get attracted to the uh, to the panel and they clog together and you can see this tiny clogs of uh, microfibers and it's really disturbing when it's inside here on the wrong side of the glass so what I highly recommend to do is to use uh, a wafer weave microfiber towel or a, a smooth surface microfiber towel and just spray the glass cleaner on top of it and then Gently clean glass surface. I must say this looked clean first, but looks much cleaner now. You can see there's the black on the uh, on the towel. So now on to the the dial and the needles. And I'm not quite sure if I need to do something here. I'm gonna inspect it close view because those are really fragile i can see there's a bit of plastic coming loose from this needle not sure if i need to do anything to that these, these are very fine needles but the, the fine part is actually in a tape that surrounds these this small fluorescent tube and i hadn't noticed this one was wider let me get you guys up close you can see, let me get a pointer, there's this plastic tape that surrounds it that has come loose. So I think I might put a small amount of glue on there and repair it to its original state. And while I'm filming this I can see there's a small hairs and fibers on there. So I'll give it a blowout with a air gun. So I don't attempt to repair the uh, the width of my temperature gauge needle um, I have this skewer here which I have sharpened to a very sharp point and this is some extra thick gel like super glue and I will try to put a small dot on the point here and then get it behind this this tape here and then push it back and hopefully the glue is more sticky enough so it sticks immediately and I may put some wire some thread around it to keep it in place for the night it has to dry like two hours or so it's, it's 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 a kind of super glue but it's not super fast glue I have to put my glasses down because my eyesight it's getting worse by the day. I visited the, doc the doctor today and she said, well, you have a lot of problems, but almost all of them are due to getting older. Now I can streak some glue on this foil. Hmm, not too bad. Also notice that the foil on the uh, tachometer needle was coming off. So what I did, I put super glue on that, and it was entirely loose. And I hope I didn't damage the conductive conductive layer on the back side. Um, you can see right, whoa, right there. There's a small misalignment. I hope it's not too noticeable in the car and I put a small strand of copper wire on there to keep it in place and also did the same on this needle but you can see here it's coming loose 
really doesn't stick too much but I don't want to put too much glue on there I'm afraid it may become messy don't want that to happen try to work a little bit neatly here so um, that's it for now now I'll leave this for the night to dry so we're a couple of days later and this is how the gauges or the needles look at this moment um, it didn't entirely stick to the luminescent tube but I'll leave it for now otherwise I'm afraid I'm damaged I'll damage it and this isn't entirely successful either but I'll leave this because I'm afraid because this is a longer needle it'll snap more easily so I'll leave it and I am thinking about using a sharpie like uh, pen to fill up this gap you see here um, I had prepared the back plate clean it a bit and reinstall the oval shaped luminescent tubes the capacitors I order are in they've been in for a couple of days and I ordered two sorts these uh, surface mount types and this uh, normal um, electrolytic type uh, these are the ones that have to replace the capacitor here on the upper board which is a surface mount as is the lower one but there was some delay in the delivery and I want to get started on this project because the other project in my tiny shed are stacking up so I have to get this out of the way so I'm going to replace the upper capacitor with the, uh, the same surface mount type and I'll use an electrolytic type for the lower one might be a bit tricky because I have a little less space here than I have here so here is the surface mount capacitor that I just desoldered from these pads there and this is the same one albeit a electrolytic capacitor that's going in and what I did you can see I bent the legs so I have a larger surface contact on the pads and there's the new capacitor in on its pads and now I'm gonna solder the next one and then put a drop of liquid liquid glue or hot glue on there so it has some uh, resistance and some support against vibration both capacitors on are on and here's the one on the lower board i'm well it wasn't exactly a knee job no next thing i'm going to do is to reassemble the uh, instrument panel as a whole again and then go off to the car and let's give this a try so i'm back at my beloved car and I'm going to plug all the connectors in for the ignition switch, the contact, and, and see if the instrument panel comes back alive. If it does, I'm going to claim victory. If it doesn't, I have to admit defeat. And I have to admit I googled for a solution. But these are the exact same capacitors I had to replace in my previous LS400 with the same symptoms. Uh, the car is hooked on power. Now, let's give this a try. Well, here goes nothing. See what happens. Oh, I'm gonna claim victory. Look at that. And there you are, guys. All gauges are illuminated. We have a readout on the odometer, and the fuel gauge is coming up. So, that's a successful repair. So, if you have problems with uh, a non working fuel gauge and flashing illumination, you now know which capacitors you have to desolder. Um, it was a almost two week project for me, but you can do this within an hour. I was about to slide this bezel back in and then I realized I still have this panel that needs to go in. A little more light on there. And the bezel, this bezel with the, uh, the uh, trip reset, the odometer buttons are just 
is slightly over here so you can uh, easily remove it I would say but it just falls off and when it falls off I'm looking for wires that go in there but it seems everything has anything to do with the, uh, the alarm system and the immobilizer has been removed you see we have to clean something about this ring now it's nice and clean so I'm gonna click in the new panel and then put a bezel back on and see if every uh, control lamp works as it should let's see if I can film and do some actually actual work with one hand and it just does it click in yeah it does so that's in now put a bezel back in place and give the instrument panel a rundown its functions well guys that's it for this episode thankfully we were able to successfully repair the instrument panel which would otherwise been very uh, costly to replace unfortunately we didn't succeed in repairing the power steering pump but that's a project for later on i have everything in now I'm not going to remove everything again. Also, when I started the car to check the uh, tachometer and the, the temperature gauge, I noticed there was a strange noise, a squeaking noise. Maybe you've heard on camera. That was the fan and I forgot to tighten two nuts. So I can only blame that on myself. But anyway, I'm glad the dashboard repair was successful. And I hope you like uh, following me along during this repair. The next episode, I'll try to focus on uh, repairing the uh, alarm and immobilizer system that came with the car. Let's see if I can restore, because when I push the little button on the key, on the ignition key itself, the car won't lock, won't unlock. I want to try to repair that one. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you did like watching this episode or the previous episode, please give me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. That would help me out a great deal. Thanks for this time and see, hopefully see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.